All right, here's a simple step that you can do if you want to lose more body fat, build more muscle, or just improve your health. One step, ready for this? Eat more protein. Eating more protein has been strongly connected to losing more body fat, getting better health, and building more muscle. It's a simple step you can take that'll help you pretty much regardless of where your goal is. And this is true for most people. Uh, this one is interesting because early on when we started the podcast, I was the guy that kept saying that protein isn't the magic metric macronutrient. Right. It turns out it might be. The studies <laughs> keep coming out. <laughs> yeah. It's funny how we, you know, we had conversations about it in the beginning. And I think it's because we came directly from the gym space yes. where, where you just see like um, the unnecessary version of that. Um, but your average person, I mean, for the most part, really – under consumed protein. Oh, the, the, the studies on it with fat loss show that when people simply try to hit more protein, they end up eating less and lose more body fat. And this is a great strategy because it's not a takeaway. It's more like a just try eating more of this, right? So psychologically, it works. It also works physiologically because it suppresses your appetite. Then for muscle building, that's been well established. Everybody knows that. And then there's this new weight loss study that came out. Max Lugavere shared it um, recently where they had groups of people lose weight, uh, same calories, but one group had a higher protein version of the low calories. The other group had a lower protein version of, this, of those calories. The higher protein version had better health markers. Mm. So the argument used to be that most of the health marker improvements with weight loss were just from the fat loss. So you eat less calories, you lose body fat. So right. as long as you're hitting your macronutrient minimums or whatever, you're, you're, it doesn't really make a big it's difference. It's law of thermodynamics. Not yeah. true. They're showing that a higher protein, same calorie version of a diet is actually better, not just for fat loss, but for health markers as well. Things like insulin sensitivity, glucose, um, and other blood markers. So eating more protein across the board is, is good. Now, I will say this one little thing I'll add here. Um, don't try to do this through protein powders. Right. That's the worst way to do this. In fact, I think there's maybe some benefit to doing that. But if it comes from whole foods, that's where you're going you're gonna to reap all these benefits. That was the go-to in the gym. And I yeah. think that's what led us to kind of question it a bit, you know, in the beginning. But, yeah, from whole food sources, obviously, that's where we want to steer everybody. Yeah, no, I, I challenged this from the very beginning when we talked about it. I remember this is one of the first things that we we actually disagreed with on this podcast. If you go all the way back to the early episodes, yeah. we go back and forth. Now, that, not that I don't necessarily agree with Sal's argument. Like, I think the point he was making back then was true, too, was that – you know, there is this massive push just to sell supplements and protein powders yeah. and that the uh, fitness community, like they overdo it. They're taking four <laughs> scoops of protein at a time and like everywhere they go, they got bars and shakes. And so I totally understood the angle he was coming from. But I just remember that general message not being a great one for the majority because most people that I coached and trained, they they suffered from this. They didn't get enough protein. And it does, it, it not only benefits, it benefits both building muscle and fat loss significantly. It's like one so, of the few things that does all of it. Right. Yeah. So if you're somebody who uh, overconsumes, you know, bad calories, I shouldn't say bad, overconsumes any calories, right? You're overeating and you're and you're putting on uh, on body fat. Uh, <clears throat> focusing on a higher protein diet helps satiate you and keep you from eating more calories. Obviously a huge benefit and will help with fat loss. Then in addition to that, uh, it's essential to building muscle. So you cannot build muscle without any protein. You got to have protein in your diet. And we know that there's benefits as you start to go up towards the one-to-one -one ratio. And so the the more of it you tend to consume, the greater the benefits are towards building muscle. So you have a single macro that is benefited the people that are trying to lose body fat and benefit the people that are trying to build muscle. And I just... It's. A, I think it's a message that needs to continue to be pushed because still to this day, if I tell somebody, just eat the way you eat, let me see your diet, and I look at it, one of the first things I see as a glaring, obvious direction is to add protein. Even if they're getting the essential amount, there's still room for me to tell them to eat more, and when I tell them to eat more, they tend to eat less of the other yeah, shit. Yeah, essential protein for most people would be like 40, you know, anywhere between like 30 to 60 grams of protein a day on average. But what we're talking about is uh, studies will show about 0.6 to 0.8 grams per pound of body weight. That's kind of complicated. Just simplify it. Eat your weight in protein, in grams of protein, or eat your target weight in right. grams of protein. I say target weight for people who want to lose a lot of body weight, uh, mm. body fat. So and or somebody who wants to build a lot, right? So yeah. if you're somebody who wants to get to 220 pounds and, and you only and weigh- 210. Yeah. Eat two, aim for 220 grams of protein. Right, right. If you want to lose 30 pounds, aim for that target body weight. But it's going to be high protein uh, regardless. And that has profound 
fat loss, muscle building, and health uh, promoting benefits. And this message it needs to be communicated more often now because of the interesting demonization of animal sources of food. It's been somewhat politicized. And look, you can do this through plant sources. It's really hard though. It's, it's, you're probably going to want to get a lot of this protein from, from animal sources. It's really hard to eat 30 or 40 or 50 grams of protein from plant sources without also having a tremendous volume of other things and just total amount of food yeah. and maybe digestive issues. Animal sources tend to be best, but um, it's, look, the data is very clear on this and it's a lot of data. It's not a little bit of data. It's a lot of data that supports this. So it's, it's one easy step that you could take whether you want to lose weight, gain weight, or just improve your health. Just hit those, those protein targets. Uh -huh. you know, it's a big one.